Hello, okay. Good evening, everyone. We are live this evening. And with us this evening, we have a guest speaker. I can wait for us to have her in our meeting and our opening this evening. And it's Friday. Why not? It's the best time. By the way, if you're looking at my background, <laughs> yes, today we celebrated Mother's Day since Mother's Day is the weekend on mm -hmm. Sunday. And it's also the best time for us to be here, talk about relationship. And that's exactly what the topic is going to be. It's about building relationship in a time of crisis. So mm -hmm. women in the group, good evening to you. Happy Friday. And we have with us Marshawn. And Marshawn is, I'm going to read her bio to you. So bear with me. Marshawn is a certified life relationship strategist. She's a speaker and an author. Through her work, she shares content design to help women create healthy romantic relationships. Mm -hmm. Having experienced the cycle of jumping from one relationship to another, Marshawn took control of her life and her love destiny. In her book, Reignite Your Relationship by Seven Time, she uses some of the same techniques that have helped her as well as her clients to master self-love in order to attract the right mate. So here with us tonight, we have a mother, a beautiful mother who's here and who's going to enlighten us about relationship and how to build ourselves. We are welcoming Marshawn Olinian to the broadcast. Hello, Marshawn. Hello, Nadege and everybody out there. Thank you so much for having me here. And that was such a beautiful introduction. It said exactly what was going on with me. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me here today. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Absolutely. You are welcome. Tonight, I mean, I, I was so excited because, of course, in everything we do is not only with the fact that we're dealing with a crisis, a, mm -hmm. a pandemic and um, frustration, but it's overall something that we need in our personal lives, you know, to have a strong, a steady relationship and to know that even in building our businesses, yes. we must have a strong relationship because it's part of the core of what we are and our values. Mm -hmm. And it's also part of building our confidence because when we have a great support system from our partners, our um, mm -hmm. um, husbands or wives or you name it in your relationship, it helps you grow even better. So Marshawn, again, welcome and enlighten us. Let's start about how did you come to First, write your book about the relationship. What got you to be the strategist and the person to be teaching us about building a strong relationship, especially in this time? Perfect. That, that's a beautiful question. Thank you so much for asking it, Nadege. Um, so what got me into writing the book and even become a relationship strategist is because I, like so many people out here, um, did not get this structure. I did not get the teachings. I did not get the, the, the showings of how to actually choose a partner, how to be in a relationship, how to be in a marriage, how to um, thrive in a marriage, how to have a healthy marriage. And so I, I was in um, one marriage prior to the one that I'm in now. So this is my second marriage that I'm actually in. But the first marriage that I was in, although I knew that I wanted to be in a marriage, I wanted to have my 2.5 kids, my dog, my picket fence. I wanted that American dream like everybody else. Um, and I also grew up around relationships my entire life, but there was still no talks, no sit down, sit, sit down and let me tell you about the birds and the bees, or let me tell you how to actually choose your mate. Let me tell you how to actually show up in your relationship. Let me tell you how to actually communicate effectively so you're not having all of these unnecessary fights, all of these unnecessary frustrations. Mm -hmm. I didn't get any of that structure, like so many people out here. So I had to bump my head several times and date and date and date and date and date and date. And date 
and bump and bump and bump. And so I, I really got sick and tired of that cycle. So mm. I sped through my first marriage. It obviously didn't work out. Um, we, we, we divorced and, you know, moved on. But then I ended up in the dating cycle. And I was like, okay, what is actually going on? Because I'm in, with this guy and then the breakup. And then I'm with this guy and then the breakup. So I was in a crazy cycle for over 14 years of the dating. So from my ex-husband to the, the dating cycle up until now I'm meeting my husband. So in between that time, that up and down dating cycle, I said, enough is enough. Mm. I literally had to take a look in the mirror and say, Marshawn, you are the only common denominator in all of these relationships. So you have to figure out what you're doing because, and I had to do that because we, as people, we, as women, we always have a tendency to point that finger. It's not my fault. It's the other person's fault. Uh, or he, if he was doing, if he was doing and finished the sentence, if he was doing and finished the sentence, then everything would have been okay. But you have to remember that the relationship that you're in, you're in every single one of those relationships that are not mm -hmm. working out. So even though what you're saying could be partially true, we never literally strip apart ourselves and take a look in the mirror at our own selves and how we're actually showing up the things that we're doing the things that we're saying how we're verbalizing the talks are we mm -hmm. the ones who, who who are the toxic partner because you could actually be the toxic partner mm -hmm. i wasn't the toxic partner but obviously there was still something that was not going right which was why i kept ending up in the breakup phase the breakup stage and so um, to speed up the story, I actually interviewed several of my ex exes. So I was collecting that data. That's who I got it from. And they was telling me, you know, what I was doing that was a turn off for them, which is why we mm. didn't to the next stage. And although it was like, boop, <laughs> you know, the mm. infection was hit me in the face. I took it. I, I tried my best not to take it personally. When I was talking to these men, I did not talk to them for the sake of let you and I work this out. It didn't work out moving on. So now I want to better myself. Mm -hmm. How can I get to the next level? So the next relationship that I get into, this same thing, at least this same thing or things will not occur. They will mm -hmm. not happen on my watch any longer. And so I started to apply the things that my exes told me was wrong. And as I started to date new men, I started to do that very thing and made sure that I was making conscious decisions on how I was actually showing up. And long story short, it actually paid off. So my second husband has gotten the best part of me. He sees the best portion of me, me showing up and not being frustrated, me showing mm -hmm. up, even when, even when I'm frustrated, to be able to just stand back, hold my tongue and say, you know what? We can talk about this later. Or I, I I totally disagree with you, but not like in a blaming, not in a guilty, mm -hmm. not in a shaming way. It's just, you know what? I actually don't agree with what you're saying. And so we actually can end this conversation because we're just going to keep going in circles. So learning to be more mature in my relationship instead of just popping off or all of the neck rolling or you. And so I had to learn how to do all of this stuff. So my husband um definitely has the best part of me so that's actually how i got into it and so because i did all of this work on myself plus collecting the data and, and people would start to ask me questions like how are you doing this or can you show me how you mm -hmm. did that or how did you I, I haven't even been married one time now you're on your second marriage like how did you do that you got married twice i'm still struggling i, I can't anybody get anybody to say you know um propose to me one time so I, I started teaching people, just started okay. teaching people. And long story short, now several years into that, now I teach people how to do it. I give them an actual strategy, which is mm -hmm. I'm a life and relationship strategy. So I give them an actual strategy to make them better, the woman usually better, because those those are the people, those are my clients usually are women. Mm -hmm. They come to me and we work on you. Yes, we talk about your relationship. We talk about your man or your husband, but we're really working on you to get you together because what I have found out is if you are together as the woman, your relationship will run smooth. Everything else will start to fall into place. Yes, there's going to be a... Um, a practice stage per se. Right. Yes, you're going to forget. Yes, you're going to mess up. You're going to revert back. But if you continue to do these things and put them into place and become more aware of how you're showing up, become more conscious of how you're showing up, your relationship will smoothen out for the better. 
mm. you'll feel happier. You'll laugh more. You and your spouse will be connected more. Like I can go on and on and on, but I'm gonna turn it back over to you. I, 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 I can go on and on and on, so I'm gonna turn it back over to you. But that's how I got started. Everything. I'm loving it. Look, I'm loving. I made. <laughs> This is, this is comfortable right there. This is the topic <laughs> of the weekend. Why not? Yes. <laughs> I can yes. sit behind because we want to set the mood because it's about who we want to be, what we want to be, and how we are making the relationship better. And how, I'm listening to you earlier and you said you had to actually interview <laughs> the oldies in the relationship, the people that you had prior in your relationship in order to help yourself know who you are. So what I'm understanding is that in everything that we are doing, we have to search for ourselves. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. 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 We have to get to the root of who we are. And the only way to do that, ladies and gentlemen, the only way to do that is to go deeper, to go within, mm -hmm. within yourself, because we have a tendency to look outside. We're looking outside and we're trying to talk to other people about this and that, or should I do this? Should I do that? And, and, and coming to, to coming to the crisis with COVID, to, to, to wrap it all together, a lot of people are frustrated and angry. One of the reasons about that is because we're not used to sitting still. We're not used to dealing with the voices, the things that are coming up in our head. And so we have, we're starting to have this anxiety about everything and, and, and we want to move. We have to move. We got to get up and do something instead of sitting and even journaling out what those thoughts are. But sitting in the feelings and letting them come over you, they don't have to stay there, but letting them actually come over you so you can feel those feelings and then move on with them. Most people start to do things and they're blocking all of this stuff, not realizing that you're actually hurting yourself in the long run. You're hurting yourself in the long run. And so to answer your question, Adesh, you never get to know who you truly are if you're doing this constant blocking of those feelings. You have to let them wash over you. And then if you need to cry, I, I, I talk to so many clients that are that that really have not cried in years. And I'm talking about it. Mm. cry. I'm talking about that nasty snot coming out your mouth where you like on the floor rolling for how mm. long you need to get that out of you. Mm -hmm. You need to release all of that junk mm -hmm. out of you. Mm -hmm. A great way is to cry. I, I call it an ugly cry. Another yeah. way is to journal it out where you're literally like, okay, the thought that just came up was me feeling abandoned. Why am I feeling mm. abandoned? Let me write down why I'm feeling abandoned. And usually, ladies and gentlemen, the things that come up for you is always related back to your childhood. Mm-hmm. It's always related back to your childhood. And, and because it's related to your childhood, you might not even know that you're actually still picking up the same type of people that do the same type of behavior. The things that you're trying to run away from, you all of a sudden, you just keep attracting the same type of energy. The same type of behavior is, 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 is running towards you. It's because you have not learned the lesson and you have not dealt with your feelings, which is why you keep banging your head going through the same thing over and over and over again. You have to, to sit still and deal with the feelings. Mm, and, and I stop love doing that. that blocking. You hear that? So all of you women in the group, if you are live, um, this is the best time for you to come in and ask your questions to Marshawn. She is a, a certified relationship strategist and she's there to help you understand how to enter into your relationship without making it a roadblock for yourself. Oh, I love that, you know, and without making it, you know, um, a pause into what you really want. You're not going full force in your relationship. You have to learn to know who you are and you have to learn to stand still. I, I really, you know, put those quotations into those words just so I could repeat exactly what you said, because we need to understand how important it is for us 
before we dive into any sort of relationship. So we do have questions here being asked. Let's see what we have. Hello, hello, hello. Please remember each time you are writing a comment to write your name just so we can know who you are. Perfect. I have, I agree from someone, from our user. Hello, hi everybody. I think that's why I attract the same unnecessary energies in my life. I'm mm -hmm. assuming this is according to what you said from it may happen, you know, at a you know young age from your background, mm -hmm. really per se. So, and I'm quoting to that because a lot of time we do not understand that situations from past experience may cause us to go back to the mm -hmm. same pattern. Yes, yes, yes. How would you advise um, women in this group about understanding the pattern, identifying the pattern, mm -hmm. and then, you know, choose the right timing into choosing in their relationship? Okay. So, so I, I, I want to address this and then wrap it all together, which is, the reason why that's happening is because you haven't dealt with the things that I just mentioned, such as your feelings, and then even going deeper with the fact of the root, where is all of this coming from? And again, as I mentioned, it's usually somewhere from your childhood. And so you're attracting the same person. You're correct. You're tra attracting the same person over and over again. Maybe they you know, are, are different in appearance. To right. a certain degree, because we actually, most of us have a type. So to a certain degree, you're dating the same person over and over again. That's not healthy for you. That's not really the one for you. And all of that is because you are, you, you know that thing. It's mm -hmm. comfortable for you, even though you know that it could be even deadly for you. Mm -hmm. It's really, really bad for you. It's frustrating to you. You're always in the same spot. You're angry all the time about this thing. But it's because you have not broken out of your comfort zone to try something different. Or maybe you've tried something different because it was a little off. You're like, I don't know. And that I don't know part is the fear part because mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. It's the uncertainty. Is this going to be, how, how, how do I actually act now? How do I actually show up now? Because you just don't know. And, and really what you have to do is just Sport. take a deep <laughs> dive in. you got to just take a deep dive in to try something new because if you don't, you're going to keep reverting back to that comfort zone, even though you know it is unhealthy for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even though so you know it's, it's unhealthy for you. So it is all about the comfort zone and being able to come out of it, you know, yes. the fear. Absolutely. But we face the fear. There's you a fear that. Fear. <laughs> I'm but sorry, we've been talking, but yes, you gotta, you have to face your fear, and, and and you have to face your fear. But then you also have to realize that you cannot just jump from one relationship to the next. You really have to deal with all of that stuff that happened. And if you can get to the root of all of that stuff that happened in your past relationship, the next relationship, right, mm -hmm. after you've done your work, so the next relationship, you'll be able to recognize a lot more of the red flags. You'll mm -hmm. be able to recognize a lot more what you don't like. You'll be even able to recognize the things that you like and even love and then be able to start compartmentalizing those things and be able to speak up and speak your truth. What I've also noticed as a life and relationship strategist is that so many women, we have a tendency to go along with the person's flow. Mm. Instead of going in with your standards, instead of going in with your knowing, and that knowing could be, I want a marriage, I actually want, or I don't want a marriage, right? But mm -hmm. I, I want it, I actually like just long-term relationship. But you, but most people don't even know that. They just like, okay, I like him. He likes me. Let's see what happens. They're not asking any questions. They're just going along yeah. with today. And then wondering why things are not actually panning out the way that they want them to. Whatever your two is, like whatever your end, end game is when it comes to the relationship, which really is a different topic because the end game of actually getting the person is really the beginning of the next stage. But that's a different, that's a different topic. Uh. So, so it's really the beginning, but most people don't even make it to what we call the beginning of the relationship because you have not done the work the prior work. to entering the healthy work of yourself, mm. which is all going back to you knowing who you are. Mm. Completely. Mm. So when that when that junk comes to you, when that BS comes to you, then you're like, hold up, babe. I don't like the way you talk to me. 
without all of that yelling and screaming because anytime you're doing all that yelling and screaming nobody's paying attention nobody's listening mm -hmm. to that and so if you have control over your emotions your partner will fall in line right your, right. your partner will fall in line but you have to remain cool and you have to know who you are so anytime you're dealing with somebody that's just spewing all this yuck at you all this mean stuff at you you can shake all that off and say babe i get it you upset you you upset but this is how it's coming out mm -hmm. you're you upset but i do not like the way that you spoke to me you cannot speak to me that way if you expect us to continue this relationship you have to be able to put down your foot standards yes yes mm -hmm. because, and you have to te teach people how to treat you Mm -hmm. If you let them walk all over you, they will continue to walk all over you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And finally, before I turn it up back over, I want to actually say that a lot of times, women, women, we have a tendency to want to get married. Like we're we're groomed that way. Doesn't matter what country you're from, you're usually groomed to be the wife, to take care of the children, the household, etc. Right. So we are right. that in our mind and. When, when you don't go in with your standards, you usually do not end up getting that thing. Now, just one story that I want, want you to think about is think about that friend that you see all the time, mm. but you might think that she's that B word. You might think that, but she always have a man and she always have the title. You know why? Because even though you was the woman looking at her and like, dang, she's a B, she's a whatever. She got standards when it comes to her man. She knows her worth, to, at least to a certain degree, and she knows what she wants. So mm -hmm. if she wants to be the girlfriend, she's going to be the girlfriend. If she wants to get that engagement ring, guess what she's getting? And at some point, if she wants to be the wife, she will get it. Wow. She will get it. Mm -hmm. Because she has standards. They might not be great standards, but she has standards, and she knows what she wants. Mm -hmm. So we got we got to start paying attention to that stuff and then applying it to our own life. You don't have to take all the junk that you don't like, but take the things that you see that's working for that person. Do it yourself because it does work. Mm -hmm. It does work. So I don't know if you are taking notes, but if you're not, if I were you, I would be taking notes. <laughs> we need to understand that in our relationship, it is essential that mm -hmm. we put ourselves first and you know in love bro whether in love or not you have to be able to make you first in the relationship just so you can create and build your foundation have a great standard have high values just so anybody in the relationship with you can follow you alone you're not going in a battle in the relationship you're building a relationship so by building a relationship you have to be able to know who you are and knowing who you are is also helping you grow that be inspired and actually have the confidence just so when you are in the relationship you have a better flow when you talk and you know sometimes we get angry easily you know, it's part of our emotion, right? Mm -hmm, we, mm -hmm. we are sensitive people. Our heart, our head goes right in the minute something does not go um, as per what we wanted. You know, um, we always have that. That's not how I want it. You know, we are spoiled brats, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to know how to put it aside in order to help our relationship grow. Yes. It doesn't matter the type of relationship you are in, whether it's marriage relationship or mm -hmm. you're living in the house with someone without being married and if you engage or you are with a partner, whatever the relationship that you are in, you have to know how to set the foundation for that relationship just so it can grow best and better for you and for the life that you want to have. Remember, you are the creator of the life that you want to have. And thank you. And in the life that you are creating, in that painting that you have, you're designing a beautiful, you know, not the big white house castle or picket fences, not that one, but the kind that says when you are at home, you are in your happy place. And when you are with your 
partner, your husband, your wife, and your children, because you know there's gonna be that time in your relationship where you have children as well. You are also in your happy place because they bring you to your best, and you are building a business. So how do you want to build your best business without a relationship that is solid? So that's my question for you, Marshawn. How do you encourage women? Because in here, the majority of 125 women in the group, and I'm hoping that much more are coming in, you know, how do you encourage building a relationship for business mm -hmm. to be the set foundation so the relationship at home can work accordingly without bringing frustration because it's a time when people want to have the business that of their dreams it's a time where you know some people are losing their jobs you know even so how do we balance that from home and business just so as women we can always show up successful and always show up strong and courageous in order to help maintain a solid relationship, whether for the business or just for a home. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so my advice would be for everybody to, as much as possible, because I do know that there are people that are still working nine to fives and building a business on the side. And then there are those who are working the business full time. But with that being said, as much as possible, schedule in all of the things that you know that need to be done. And I'm sure you've heard this before, but it really does work because every body gets in on your schedule and you have a tendency to show up and be present when you know that you have something to do this hour or the half hour whatever your schedule is so this hour to the next hour to the next hour and so for me my personal example is I schedule as much as possible and I'm, I'm building businesses businesses, and I'm writing books. I'm a wife, I'm a mother, and I still work um, a job as well. So I got a lot of stuff going on. Oh, and of course I coach clients as well. Mm. I got a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff going on. And so the things that I know that I want to do, I'm sure some of you out there can, uh, can, can relate to this is I get up, I start my day. I lose sleep is where I'm going with this. I start my day most days at 4 a.m. Mm. because I need to get up and work at least an hour. Now, you work your schedule how it works for you. But for me, I get up at least an hour so I'm not interrupted because I also have a three-year-old toddler. Mm. Toddlers are busy, <laughs> right? My <laughs> husband can understand. My toddler cannot. So I know if I want to be productive the first hour I need to get up and do that. And then if it's, if it's a weekday, then I go to my job. Right. Mm -hmm. And then by the time I come um, get out of my job, then I'm coaching clients. So that schedule, I got that time frame schedule. I'm coaching clients. And then after I get out of that, then I go inside the house and I'm with my family. So I block off time at least the two hours to be with my family, to converse with my husband, to play with my daughter. So I, fully present and not worrying about, oh my God, I didn't do this with the business today. I didn't do that. So I, at least two hours where I'm doing my thing with my family, whether we eat dinner or I'm playing blocks or I'm teaching her how to read or I'm teaching her ABCs or me and my husband are laughing or we're watching a movie. It's all in that two hours time span, whatever, whatever it is that we're doing. And then I still have to think about me, right? Mm -hmm. So at some point during the day, I still need to get out my work, work, work out. And then I got to take care of me with just shower and all that other stuff, right? But I have I have it mapped out. And, mm. and a lot of people ask me how I do so much. And I don't want to make this a brag fest, but I do a lot of things. In these past three months, I've written five books. Mm. How am I doing that after all the stuff that I just told you? Because I make a schedule Time. and I do everything and I do something every single day in all of those categories that matter to me. So you figure out what categories matter to you, put them on the schedule and specifically write down what you're going to work on that day. Not just I'm going to be with my husband. I even I even schedule in the check ins for our relationship. Because I need to figure out, am I doing good? Are you doing good? This is what you need to work on. What do I need to work on? What am I doing excellent in so I can keep that up? So I, I schedule it all in because it's all important. And I also do not want to be, and I'm sure that you don't as well, you don't want to be a person that is a public success and a private failure. Right, right. You get 
everything going on in your business, but your relationship is sucking because you're not putting your family into your lifestyle. And that's where <laughs> all of this is going. Start to build the lifestyle that you want right now. So in the next two years, you can be like, well, everything, the foundation has already been laid. Like, I don't work on Sunday. Even if I talk to you and you're a potential client and I got to send you a contract, you're not getting it till Monday. I, I'm not, I don't work on, I don't work on Sundays. Right. So stick to your thing that works for you. Right. Right. Schedule, schedule, schedule and block off the days. That's important to you. Block mm. them off. Sundays are important to me. That's my family day. And that's what I do on my family day mm -hmm. is be with my family. I don't work. That's awesome. Oh my, I love this. So if you have not yet learned because, Hey, it's a learning place. It's where we understand things and strategies just so we can apply in our personal lives. So please take notes of what is given to you this evening. I'm looking up, I'm looking down, but I'm still looking. <laughs> so, <laughs> I want you ladies, I'm inviting you, not once, but I'm inviting you to take notes of what is given this evening, because all these are information that you need to grow in a successful life. The lifestyle that you want, the relationship that you want, especially in this time when we are meeting crisis, you know, it may get worse, but it also, we also hopeful that it, it will go back to what the normal. But by the time that it gets to the normal, what are the lessons you are learning this evening about having a strong relationship just so when everything goes back to normal, you could still be at your norm as well and mm -hmm. your business can flow accordingly as well as your relationship. Marshawn said, having a block, you know, time where you know that the time that you want to spend with your family is sacred and you have it for that and you do not let anything else get in between is the same for your business. When it's the mm -hmm. time to work, you know, you put your work first and then when everything is done, time is off because you go to work nine to five, right? Mm -hmm. After work nine to five, any email that is sent to you and you receive that email after the hour, trust and believe I will not be reading that email. <laughs> right. Because right. it's no longer, I may be reading it. I, my eyes may cross paths, but I will not answer it not until the following day because mm -hmm. it happens that I ended up reading it after the hour. So you know what? So be it. So you, we have to get into that habit of knowing what is best for us in order to have strong, successful relation. Yep. And relationship, guess what? They do have ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we run away from the ups and the downs. So <laughs> this is the time for us to also know, you know, in building the strategies and learning how to best work in the relationship, we have to accept, you know, those ups and downs. But how we are going to accept them is by you being able to talk about them. And that's what, that's one of the things that I notice, and I'm speaking in general, women, we tend to run away from that space when we have to deal with something negative that happened in the relationship, <laughs> you know, a, a, a mishap or something, you know, along the a discussion that happened and went into escalating. And then the minute it escalates, we tend to close up and run away from it and not want to be bothered and not want to talk. So, Mashaun, as the time is going, and you, I want this to be, you know, a lengthy information just so us women in the group and others outside may hear you and learn from you. How do you advise us to strengthen the relationship by talking? What are the, 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 the steps you want, you would like to advise us to follow in order for us to know how to best approach an up and down relationship without feeling that we have to hide? 
behind anything or we have to close up because we tend to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So beautiful question. First of all, I would say um, to, to honor your feelings, honor your feelings and don't close down when the feelings are not so great. We all can show up and be happy in the happy times, but when it's the not so great feelings, be able to say, you know what, these are the feelings that I'm having and be able to express those feelings to your spouse or your partner, um, especially because we have a tendency to hold things in. But when you're holding all of this stuff in, the frustration and resentment starts to build up towards your spouse. And because that's building up, the distance is happening, and but also mm. the love is declining. So mm. if you just release that stuff and say, you know what, these are the feelings that I'm having. I, you know what, I, I go back to the example that I used earlier. I do not like the way that you spoke to me five minutes ago. Um, actually, I would really like it for you to say, you know what, I need a time out right now. Mm -hmm. instead of just getting angry and blowing up. So honor your feelings would be the first thing that I would have to say. And then the second thing really is to know that you do not have to respond in that moment. And what I mean by that is because we are so quick to lash out and use this as a weapon, mm -hmm. you do not want to do that because, again, you want the love to flourish. You want your relationship to thrive. So mm -hmm. be slow to respond so you can take time to actually think about what your response would be so number one your response is going to be more intelligent but then also you'll be able to effectively communicate what it is that you need to say and when you take the time away to calm down you can actually say okay this is what what this is why this bothered me so much and again this might even stem back to your childhood. What happened between you and your spouse could have just been a trigger. It could have just been the trigger. And so now you're recognizing what that trigger actually is. And you realize, you know what? I have this trigger because when I was younger, my mom would always tell me to shut up. And I didn't feel like I had a voice then. And so anytime you do that to me, you make me feel like I don't have a voice with you. I don't have a say so with you. So when you do that, that's why I lash out. I know that it's not right, but I'm telling you the background so you can understand me better, which is what will actually happen. You will, your, your partner will start to understand you a lot better. And then another thing that would actually do is when you start to show up in a different way and start to be able to articulate in a mature way, the feelings that you're having, again, your spouse will follow suit. It might not happen the first time, might not happen the second time, but the more that you are in control of your emotions and being able to articulate the things that you need to say and your expression, him or her will do the exact same thing. They will follow your formula mm -hmm. without even realizing that they're following your formula. So for instance, in my actual marriage, my, my husband, he has a tendency to try to over talk me. And I'm like, babe, I'm actually talking. Right. And then I'll continue on like you'll actually be quiet and I'll continue on. But what I noticed is when I get passionate and I'm ready to over talk to him, over talk him, he'll do the exact same thing. Babe, I'm talking and I'm like, oh, well, look at this right here. Right. <laughs> well, look at this right here. But that's my point. The more that you're in control, because if you're all over the place, it's going to be crazy. Right. If you calm and center, even though you frustrated as heck inside, but if on the outside, you're able to articulate and get that stuff out, your partner will follow suit for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. yeah. Calm and collected. Calm and collected, for sure. <laughs> so I'm hoping that we are taking notes, women. It, you have to be able to know yourself, right? You have to be able to stand still and listen to that voice before you go in and talk because we tend to... Go first with the words and not really think. Um, so it's like reverse engineer everything by thinking first before we say a word. Absolutely. Because we Absolutely. want to be able to understand and comprehend the scene first, what happened. You know, what did I do first that made him react or made her yes, react that yes, way? Yes. So not just go and bombard, <laughs> you know, and then later on get crashed. But instead, what did I do? What did I do? What did I say? Why is he responding like that? Why is she responding like that? 
Was I the cause of the ups and downs? Now yes. that you know, and then you can approach it with a different, you know, wording or different approach. And mm-hmm. your your approach will be much more confident, by the way, because you will not just come in arrogant, but you will come in calm. Like uh, Marshawn said, you get to know because you ask yourself all these questions. Now you're able to enter and say, you know what? I noticed this happened when we had the argument mm-hmm. and I did not appreciate it, but I know I, as well, I was at fault because of what I said, because we have to, we have to embrace our faults. We yes. tend to <laughs> take yes. it like, Hey, I got this. We do get this, but I, we have to able to, to be able to calm ourselves down and then allow ourselves to know where we went wrong Mm -hmm. and say it, you know, own it. And those are the practices that we have to build. We get to build in the relationship and it's going to help the relationship be better, stronger. Mm -hmm. And even in your business, everything will flow accordingly because you will also know how to deal with your staff. Because Mm -hmm. when you talk to your family, your husband, your wife, it brings you to understand better how other people respond to you. Yes, yes, yes. And when they respond to you, you know what to expect. So when you're dealing with other people, like in your staff, in your in your team, you know also how to talk to your team. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes you a great leader. Yes. And sometimes we fall behind that, or oh, I'm the leader, I'm the boss, I get to say, and what I say is what is happening. But it's not about that. Yes, you are the boss. But remember, I did post something recently that says, it's not about you being the boss because we are not boss lady. We are lady bosses. <laughs> you know, those that we, we walk on high heels, we <laughs> build our confidence. Mm-hmm. So we cannot be bosses, but we are ladies, okay, who are in the business. So mm-hmm. we are lady bosses. We are the ones who make decisions and the decisions that we make, they help others grow. Right. So we are not leading to push other people down. We are leading to help other people grow. And it starts from the relationship at home and then it carries on to the relationship at work. Mm -hmm. So we are about three minutes left to wrap up this evening. (laughs) So Marshawn, I am really grateful that we had this opportunity to talk, to have this conversation. And I love that it's a dialogue. It helps other people see Mm -hmm. that here we engage, we talk. And if you are watching the replay, please remember to write hashtag replay just so we would know. And if you have any questions, you could still on your hashtag replay, ask your questions. And I'm very sure and positive that we will get back to you and Marshawn will reply to you. She's in the group as well. And she Mm -hmm. will bring much more into the informational um, stage that we are building here for this community. So Marshawn, anything you would like to share? Where is the best platform to be reached at? The best platform, um, two of them actually. So I have a YouTube channel that's uh, Marshawn O. So Marshawn, the spelling my name, and then just my first um, last name letter, Marshawn O. And then also on Facebook, I have uh, a Facebook group that would be the best place, which is um, Dating to Marriage. Mm. Dating to Marriage. So go from dating to marriage uh, mm-hmm. and, and just learning how to actually show up. And some of the content that I'm actually speaking here today would be some of the same type of content that I mentioned in my um, group as well. And it's just a lot of engagement there. So if you're interested, then definitely, you know, find the group and I, I'll, I'll prove you in there. Just answer the questions and then you'll be invited in. So those are the best two platforms to find me in for sure. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. So we want to learn much more about, you know, building strong relationship in our marriages and, you know, in our partnerships and mm-hmm. whatever you name it, because it's about how you, whatever you name your relationship, it's for you. Just right. so you know, because a lot of times we're like, oh, 
but other people are going, no, don't worry about what other people are going to say. You only know what you want for your strong relationship right. because it's what you bring indoor between you and your relationship. That's what matters. Mm -hmm. And it carries through because it, it, what it does, and I can tell is that what it does for us, it makes us know how to even show up with our postures, you know, be mm -hmm. strong because we know we have head on our shoulders and we carried on. We know that we have a support system. And that's the last of the things that we wanted to address this evening. How do you understand relationship as a support system? Because a lot of time we just see relationship for what it is. It's a relationship. But do you connect the dot that a relationship is a support system? What do you mm -hmm. think? I, I totally, oh, oh my goodness. I totally believe that relationships are the connecting factor to everything in your life um, from your business. Because let's be honest. Your business mm -hmm. is all about relationships. It's all about the connections. And so I, I, I actually get um, a little disturbed when somebody reaches out to me and they're only thinking about themselves, right? Or they, mm -hmm. they, they all of a sudden just automatically send me over something, but I have no idea who you are. We haven't even had a, a Facebook Messenger conversation or whatever platform I'm on, or you send me an email and I have no idea what this is about, but you're asking for something. You have mm -hmm. not built the relationship. Relationship. You've never even said hello to me and all of a sudden now you're asking for something. So slow down and literally just have a conversation. Like mm -hmm. It's not even anything big. The how are you doing starts the conversation. Or mm -hmm. I noticed something on your page that struck my attention starts the conversation. Don't just go on it all about yourself. And then mm -hmm. also just, just to think about um, how relationships are structured and how, how, you know what, let me back up. Think about your best friend or really great friendships. The people that you like to be around, the people that you like to actually boost up and give the information to for free are mm -hmm. the people that you know and like, the people that you make that make you feel good. You also make them feel good. Y'all laughing and joking all the time. And most people don't realize that the the the, the billionaires, the millionaires and billionaires, they got to that stage by being able to yeah. just have connections outside of business. Which yeah. is why you see so many people go, let's go for a beer. Let's go out to eat because mm -hmm. the connections are made there. And a lot of times people don't understand that the deals, the big deals on the table are made outside mm -hmm. of the, the physical business. It's during that casual communication. Let me see if we're vibing right, right. together. Time. And so if you never get off of social media mm -hmm. or get on a FaceTime or get on a phone call, that relationship will never get built. But that's also the same in every area. And most people try to compartmentalize those things. You have to think about it in your romantic relationship, as well as your children's relationship, your family relationship, your friendship relationship, and of course, your business relationship. You have to attack all of them the exact same way in order to mm -hmm. build them. You have to nurture them. You have to nurture them. Give, 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 give. And guess what? You give enough people what they want, you'll absolutely get what you want. It might not be that turn, that day, but you will get what you want. But you have to mm -hmm. be able to give out, pour it out, mm -hmm. pour it mm -hmm. out, pour it mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> essential. They're essential to everything in life. They are, they are. Oh my goodness, Marshawn. It's too good to be true, but it's already <laughs> that time. Okay, we okay. getting ready to go. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. But, oh my goodness. I think we have to have an encore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> oh, I, I, oh, you already asked me back there, sonny. Okay. <laughs> yes, we have to bring an encore. <laughs> But I really am appreciative of what happened this evening. It is possible and you made it possible, all of you in the group, as well as you, Marshawn, showing up this evening to help us understand how important it is in this time when things are you know, um, chaotic. We still need to learn about best way to build a strong relationship. It's, mm -hmm. you know, because frustration is not only due to the pandemic. Frustration can be because we're losing work jobs, because mm -hmm. there's furlough, because mm -hmm. 
children are now at home mm -hmm. and certain things we never used to do, we have to do now. There are a lot of things that could bring frustration. And in order to go through, the fr through it strongly, we have to have a better sense and a better way to approach it. And right. it's all about communication, being able to communicate well with your spouse, mm -hmm. with your in your relationship, being able to communicate well with your team without making them feel like you're degrading them. And it's the mm -hmm. same in your relationship as well. It's not about who has the most power than the other. Mm -hmm. It's about how right. the two of us, we can come to a common ground in order to help build something that is successful. And if you are fully invested in your business, you know for sure that whoever you are with in your relationship is that strong bone that you need, the listening ear that you need. And therefore you have to have great communication in order for them to relate with you and help you get through this relationship. So it is the best that we can bring to you ladies. Just remember when you are watching the video over to to write down in the comment box hashtag replay we would love to read your questions and i'm pretty sure marshawn will answer to them as well yes. to the um comment box and if there's anything that you wish to hear from us please do not hesitate to write it down in the comments so on that we want to say good evening to you all and thank you for those of you who are live with us have a good evening, everyone, and thank you again. Bye -bye. Good night. <laughs>